Kia ora, my name's Wendy Sullivan. I work for New Zealand Land Care Trust. We are a non-profit organisation that is there to help farmers and growers with their environmental projects. This lake is a jewel in Marlborough. There is over 60 bird species feeding on or around the lake. The restoration group got the opportunity to use some funding from the Westpac Water Care Programme and we decided that the trial for the erosion protection was a perfect use of that funding to find us a tool that would help the lake but also potentially help other landowners that have got similar erosion problems around the country. We purchased this place around three years ago. When we came and looked at the place, there were hundreds and hundreds of birds on the water. The main thing we didn't realise was how consistently high the wind would be. When the winds are blowing, you notice the level comes up in the water, and as it does that, the water ends up soaking into the bank, and when the water recedes, it pulls in big chunks of the bank and we started to lose a few plants into the lake. Initially, when we planted all the native trees, we thought, well, this is going to help hold the bank together. It doesn't actually do that. The trees just haven't got the structure at the size they are to actually hold the bank together. So we realised there was a need to do something to try and stop further erosion going on. Now, usually you go in and, and you would either rebatter or regrade that bank and plant it up but we couldn't do that because there were some plantings there. What most people would do is they put a riprap rock on an eroding edge like that or they'll put a retaining wall or something there and that wasn't an option there because we wanted it to be a more natural area. This lake is a refuge and so I was thinking all right what if we put the bales up and stack them up against the thing and establish carisecta and use those to re-establish that little bit of an edge once they're established, they create that buffer to break wave action. We were initially hoping that it was going to be a nice calm day to do the installation, and on the installation day, it is a howling wind. We decided we would then stake out the hemp matting on the bank, roll it down off the top of the bank, across the floor of the lake, and then pack the lucerne bales in, in a pattern, roll the hemp matting back over the top of the lucerne and back up to the bank as a giant bag basically and then use biodegradable stakes to stake right through the matting into through the bales and into the ground. Rather than have the waves go smack against it which is the problem with the energy it was going to be sloped like that so the water could run in and disperse its energy into movement rather than impact. We started putting the installation in and it was going really well but within an hour, we could see the hemp matting was breaking down. It was literally in front of our eyes. And the whole thing was poised to fail. But what I loved about the day was everyone got together. We like brainstormed on the fly and came up with this cool solution of putting in the barrier to break some of that wave erosion. And we rushed out and chopped down a whole lot of branches off the poplars along the lake edge and wove them into the bank to form a breakwater, which worked incredibly well. The Carrix grasses are very fast growing and they have large root structures. The root structure grows out through the lucerne before it breaks down and rots away and forms a, a big biomass down there. And of course, that also will collect silt and form its own environment and its own stable structure. Fine silts, when they come into the lakes, they settle down and they will fill in those pores around the rocks. We lose that habitat for our microvertebrates. Other things that comes in with those silty soils is phosphorus that's locked into the soil, and sunlight doesn't get down into the bottom of the lake. We need those aquatic plants to grow, partly to take up a lot of that excess phosphorus, the excess nitrogen, but also it provides that habitat for our native fish or native insects and even the native birds that feed on those aquatic plants. The idea is that after we put it in though, we don't have to go back and remove anything. It all just naturally rots away, it's all organic and become part of the environment. Six months on, we're starting to see where it's working and what's failing. So we can learn from that, make some changes and then start to put in some protection around the rest of the lake shore where we're getting the same problems. 
you can clearly see how the lucerne has taken up the dirt, the silt from the lake, and that's what we want with the roots, these grass roots spreading all through it. And it'll be next, I would say, January 2025, we'll really see this explode and all the roots go right through, and that's when this is gonna stand the waves. And that's, that's when the trial is, is really a trial with the waves smacking into it. And if it, if it all holds together and doesn't get all just dragged into the lake, then we'll have a wind. A simple idea and simply done and can be done in any, any lake restoration project with a few little tweaks here and there. I think we've developed a technique that should work in any lake system. I really enjoy collaborating with landowners and other agencies because everyone comes to the table with different skills and we've all got the same passion, we've all got the same desire to protect the lake and when we get together the ideas are always positive and future focused. Uh, it, it's been really rewarding and in the last two years that the group's been together I think we've made some massive inroads. So if you think that this solution could help you and your problem the easiest thing to do is to go onto the New Zealand Land Care website and make contact with us and we'll be able to help talk you through what to do and how to do it. <laughs>